the 1969 comedy western film Sam Whiskey was a story that starred Burt Reynolds and Angie Dickinson. Clint Walker and Ozzie Davis play really important roles in this film, and they're great. I really love watching them, and I find their comedy together really funny. The film was directed by Arnold Levine, and Burt Reynolds always said that this movie was way ahead of its time. He says that he was playing light comedy, and nobody really cared. At this time in the late 60s, Burt Reynolds was emerging as one of the top draws in Hollywood, and he had done 100 Rifles this same year, and that movie, plus Sam Whiskey, was kind of putting him on the map to big-time stardom. Burt Reynolds plays a guy called Sam Whiskey, and Angie Dickinson plays a widow named Laura Breckenridge, and she ends up seducing Burt Reynolds into retrieving $250,000 in gold bars from a riverboat that sank in Colorado's Platte River. You see, Laura's late husband had stolen the gold from the Denver Mint and replaced it with plated lead fakes. In an effort to get the gold back before it's discovered that it's missing and her family name is ruined, she offers Burt Reynolds' character $20,000 to go and recover it from the bottom of this river and put it back. Burt Reynolds' character immediately goes for help, and he summons Jedediah Hooker, played by Ozzie Davis. He's a local blacksmith and really good at his craft. O.W. Bandy, played by Clint Walker, is an army friend who turned into an inventor, and to get these two to help him, he offers them shares of the reward. They end up locating the sunken riverboat, and during this whole time, they're being watched by Fat Henry Hobson. He's on their tail the whole time that they're pursuing this gold, and his gang is ready to jump and steal the gold away from them once they retrieve it. Clint Walker's character fashions a diving helmet out of a bucket and creates a bellows with it so that they can breathe underwater when they're recovering the gold. The gang that Fat Henry brings along ends up capturing Jed and Bandy, and during this whole time, Sam is held up in the riverboat smokestack that's sticking above the water. Fat Henry thinks that Sam has drowned because of him hiding, and they recover the gold, and they prepare to kill Sam's friends. Sam ends up coming out and freeing his partners, and they start off to Denver with the gold. Now the problem is how to get the gold back into the mint with all the security that they have in place around it. Sam ends up assuming the identity of a government inspector. They end up finally getting the bars back into the mint, and nobody was the wiser. On the train leaving for Denver the next morning, Sam splits the $20,000 with Jed and Bandy, but he decides to keep Laura for himself. Angie Dickinson's character is called Laura Breckenridge. During that era, there was a film that was made that was really controversial that starred Raquel Welch. That film was called Myra Breckenridge, and that was done in 1970. So it was done about a year after this film was released. So there's no tie-in, but you kind of wonder where they came up with that name with two films in years that were back-to-back. -back. This is just a point of trivia that really doesn't have anything to do with anything, but I find it interesting that both of these last names were Breckenridge. This movie is one of a number of of westerns that Burt Reynolds made during the mid-60s and early 70s. These westerns included Navajo Joe in 1966, the aforementioned 100 Rifles in 1969, and then The Man Who Loved Cat Dancing in 1973. And if you haven't seen the video that we did on The Man Who Loved Cat Dancing, you might check that one out. That's really got some interesting stuff in it that I find just intriguing. 
This was one of the first movies to have a scene cut under the new MPAA American rating system. You see, there's a shot that's a bare from the waist up shot of Angie Dickinson that was featured in the original print that was submitted in this movie. This topless shot of Dickinson was cut from the movie's American release, and this was done to prevent the possibility of the movie receiving an R rating, which it most definitely would have received had that been in it. The director then submitted a print with a tighter shot of Dickinson showing her from the shoulders up. Some versions of the picture, such as the Australian VCR release that was released under a different title, and that title was A Man of All Breeds, still shows the topless Dickinson in this scene. And evidently in other areas of the world, quite a few distributions of this film were done under that name, A Man of All Breeds. Originally, the pre-release title of the film was called Whiskey's Renegades. Now, to highlight Angie Dickinson, or maybe there was some other crazy reason that they did it, if you look at the credits, she is the only one in the cast that has her name in red lettering. The rest are all in white. Burt Reynolds and Ozzie Davis would go on later on to be castmates in the CBS comedy Evening Shade, which was popular in the 1990s. Now, at one point, Whiskey, O.W., and Jed come upon the signpost of a nearby town. It reads North Fork. And if you remember, this is the setting of the Levy Gardner Levine television western series, The Rifleman, from 1958. Now, this production team had collaborated on quite a few westerns and TV movies. This film was based on the original screenplay by William Norton, and that screenplay was acquired by the production company in July of 1967, along with another one of his scripts called Lions, Tigers, and Bears. He had previously written The Scalp Hunters for this group of producers. Burt Reynolds was signed in February of 1968, and then Angie Dickinson was signed as the female lead a short time later. There was a little bit of a problem getting her to sign because the script called for her to be nude in the movie, and she didn't want to do that. But she was told that the script required it, and so she reluctantly signed on to the film. The film was released by United Artists, but it was filmed at Universal Studios, and filming began April 22nd of 1968. Throughout the film, there are bits and pieces of a song about a saucy lady named Mary McCarty. The chorus to the song goes, Whiskey and gin, whiskey and gin. Mary McCarty loved whiskey and gin. The final verse to the song is finally given by Jed Hooker, played by Ozzie Davis. And that goes, Mary McCarty has gone up to heaven. She's mourned by her friends who recall her sad fate. She perished one night in the arms of her lover and passed from this world. She was just 88. After the movie ended up wrapping its shooting schedule, Burt Reynolds apparently kept a photo of himself from the film. Now, not only did this have Burt in it, it also had Angie Dickinson in it. And it was a still photograph of their bedroom scene together. Bert was so moved by this experience that he had this picture blown up and then hung over the top part of his bar at his house. He then had a caption added to the picture, and it read, An actor's life is pure hell. The critical response to the film was terrible. There was very little good things said about this picture. But that's pretty typical for anybody that tries to do a comedy western. That's a hard sell to the critics. It wasn't a commercial success either. 
but it did help establish Burt Reynolds and his on-screen persona as a cocky hero, which he would continue on writing into a successful career in the 1970s. The screenwriter of this film would go on to write several other movies that Burt Reynolds was in, including White Lightning and Gator. I think the movie is definitely worth the time spent watching it. I actually found myself really enjoying it. Take a look at it yourself. You might be pleasantly surprised. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.